Charleston Southern University has released its strategic plan for the next five years. I sit down exclusively with Charleston Southern University President Dr. Don D. Costin for this edition of Quentin's Close Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and download my free Quentin's Close Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. Dr. Don D. Costin, welcome back to Quentin's Close Ups. Uh, thanks, Quentin. I so appreciate you coming back by. You're very welcome. You know, the last time I saw you was when I was working at Five Church, still worked there, and we ran into each other at Peloton. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed introducing uh, yes. introducing my wife to you. That's yeah, right. She was thrilled to meet you. Yes. You're kind of a celebrity, so <laughs> <laughs> she was thrilled to meet you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, God is great. Let me begin with some developing news because I know just a few, or merely really a few hours ago, uh, the governor of South Carolina, Henry Gramaster, uh, addressed the South Carolina state about coronavirus. Yeah. Obviously, there's two cases in the state of South Carolina. Mm -hmm. At the Charleston Southern University, and as a president, how do you approach this situation as a Christian and as a leader? Yeah, uh, it's a it's a great question uh, be, because the the thing that's most on our minds always is the safety of our students. We want to make sure that our students have a great educational experience, and the first thing on our minds is are they safe? Are they in a great environment? Um, and this is a unique week because it's spring break, break. Um, and so uh, we have taken uh, a number of measures to make sure that our students aren't in danger. We're working very closely with uh, other universities uh, in the city, especially, but also across across the state and the South Carolina independent colleges and universities to make sure that we're all kind of following the same uh, pattern so that our students uh, are, are as safe as possible. And so as, as a leader, Quentin, as, as you know, that's our number one obligation and we're taking steps to make sure that that's the case. That's the case. It's been one year since you became the president of Charleston Southern University. What is the biggest difference between a year ago and right now as you as president? Yeah, um, it, I, we spent the first year, Quentin, uh, really doing a strategic planning process. And so it gave me an opportunity uh, as, as the new guy, because as, as we discussed last time, if I recall correctly, you know, Dr. Jerry Hunter had, had been here 34 years. And so um, the last strategic plan that he developed um, was ending about the time that he was leaving and I was arriving. Right. So it gave me an opportunity to do strategic planning. We set up a strategic, uh, strategic planning team, uh, which included about 70 individuals individuals to cover the the, uh, the, the the depth of the university, the breadth of the university, as well as a, a executive team of about eight to ten that allowed us to take data from surveys and listening sessions uh, and interviews and uh, discussions with alumni and business leaders and guidance counselors, all this. We took all this data and we put it into a big pile and this executive team helped us sort through the all that mountain of data to come up with what we think is a strong a strong strategic plan to get us to the next five through the next five years. Wow. As a matter of fact, it says this, CSU's why, the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19 to 20, of course, obviously. And you said this quote, providingly, the golden circle demonstrates the Great Commission's central role in the life at CSU. Charleston Southern was founded in obedience to Christ's command to make disciples of all nations, teaching them to align with his design. What other commands have Jesus given you to do as far as using his design? Yeah, you know, Jesus is uh, is uh, the best example, of course, of everything. You expect me to say that, but certainly the best example of how to lead an organization because Jesus started with a very small group of people right. and he gave mm -hmm. very clear directions. Um, and as you know, the Great Commission is, um, as you go, make disciples. Right. And so if you, if you simply just were to look at uh, how Jesus started, the, the, the big mission that he gave and the results that he's experienced over the course of the last 2,000 years, you have to say, hey, Jesus knows a thing or two about leadership. So the thing about Charleston Southern that's so exciting is that uh, from the very beginning of the university, 1964, our founding documents describe the Great Commission um, as, as the, the, the fundamental tenet, the founding tenet of Charleston Southern. And so when we look here all these years later, these decades later, now two generations from the time that, that the university was started, the good news is that uh, 
uh, we haven't changed. You know, the thing that hasn't changed is the Great Commission. We haven't changed our focus. He also, ta- um, the, the, the great commandments that he gave us right. were to love God with all your heart, right. soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Sure. And so when we think about um, our, our purpose in life, that's to love God. We want our students to do the same um, and uh, how, how to take care of each other as well. That's what we're, that's what we're all about, Quentin. And you also have this too, CSU's How. Faith integration in Christian community. You said this quote, our educational philosophy is driven by our mission statements push for academic excellence in a Christian environment. What does academic excellence look like under your leadership? Yeah, um, academic excellence has always been a hallmark of Charleston Southern. Um, and, and what we say to, to brand new students, we say this, um, college is harder than high school. Um, it, it is a, you're at a completely different level. Sure. And the thing, that, the thing about our faculty that I appreciate so much is that each faculty member loves their students. And that, that's without question. Our class sizes are, are small enough to be manageable, mm-hmm. but large enough to make sure that in each class there's a diversity of thought, diversity of opinion. But at the head of the class is this professor who loves the Lord and loves their students. Um, and so when we, when we think about uh, what is the number one thing that a student brings, it's this. And so academic excellence is what we're about. We are an academic institution. Um, we pair academic excellence, meaning um, we don't lower the standard to meet the student. We raise the student up to meet the standard because we think that's how to live life, right? I mean, you, you do that. That's what you do. You, you set your sights high. Sure. You do things that uh, people say, how do you do that, Quentin? And you just say, I trust God and I right. get it done. That's what we want from all of our students. We want the same thing out of them that uh, you have set for yourself. And so academic excellence and Christian environment means that uh, we have, the, the academics are the fundamental part of it, but the Christian the Christian element, the Christian community aspect is we want people to, to become more and more like Jesus Christ. We want them to love like Him. We want them to, him, them to serve like Him. We want them to be like Him in every way. And so the combination, I think, is what sets us apart from many universities. You also said this too, in nurturing student growth, academic excellence is the seed, and the Christian environment is the soul. What has student growth been like under your leadership? Yeah, we are we are starting to see a, a good bit of growth. Um, we are are we graduated our, la- our our largest graduating class in history back in back in May. And what we've seen is that, uh, as you may be aware, all across the higher education landscape, um, the the competition for students, if I can use that phrase, is getting harder and harder because, um, as, as we like to say on occasion, our business model, and this would apply to every college or university, is dependent in no small part on the birth rate 18 years ago. Mm. Um, and, and so what that means is um, 18 years ago, um, fewer students were born, <laughs> prospective students were born than had been in times past because of the recession, because of other things. Um, and so we want to make sure that uh, our university um, is as competitive as other universities, and we do that by focusing on our students. We also do that by focusing on what are the needs of our community. Um, and a couple of the needs that we've seen, uh, we've seen a need uh, to, to expand into the healthcare environment. Sure. And so we graduated our first class of physician assistants uh, in, in this past December. Uh, we, now, we now have enrolled our third class of physician assistants. A year ago, um, after we spoke, right. um, we started our first doctor of education program, so our first doctoral program, and we thought we'd have maybe 22 students per year. Yeah. We've already enrolled 87, and wow. so in just over a year. And so what we are discovering is that um, Charleston Southern exists uh, to meet the needs of our community, and we, we saw this dearth, this lack of leadership training, especially at the doctoral level, um, and we found that to be a, a big hit. Also, this, this semester, we began an engineering school, and so we are uh, beginning uh, with students to st- uh, who can study Bachelor of Science degree in electrical engineering, computer engineering, sure. and this summer um, we are bringing on board a uh, professor of mechanical engineering, mm-hmm. uh, and so we'll have those three. And so from there, we'll see what the Lord does, but we think there's a, a big need for that, especially in the Charleston area as we grow. And we continue with CSU's how, because it is both and and not either or. Meanwhile, our vision statement plants the process in a fertile terrain as the community of faculty, staff, coaches, and peer mentors cultivate. Students work the ground, and God provides the harvest. How is that terrain right now? 
It's good. It, it's really good. Again, um, when we when we look at the landscape of higher education, um, what we are trying to do as best we can with God's help is to demonstrate that Charleston Southern um, is a unique institution. We're unique because of our Christian environment. And, and as we say, we're a Christian university, but not a university just for Christians. And so everyone is welcome here. Sure. But what we think is that uh, um, if you come to a, a university like Charleston Southern, where we focus on... On, um, in fact, our impact statement is preparing servant leaders to pursue significant lives. Um, what we find is that, especially this generation, Generation Z, uh, to be to be precise, is there seems to be um, uh, more of a yearning for meaning and purpose, um, and so we provide that here. We allow students from all varieties to come, and because of their association with fellow believers in Jesus Christ, because that every professor is a professing believer in Christ, that we can see that you can uh, grow in your faith here. You can also grow in your profession here. You can grow in your discipline here to be, to become the kind of person that will be a phenomenal employee um, to, to whomever is blessed enough to get a Charleston Southern graduate. Right. And what other actions are you taking at CSU to make certain that you fulfill your vision? As far as the strategic plan, yeah, there are there are seven things that I uh, I'm concerned about. You know, there's there are hundreds and hundreds of things that the university is concerned about. But as the as the president, I'm concerned about seven things that come in two different buckets. The first bucket is what what are our wildly important goals? You know, what are the things that of all the hundreds and thousands of things that we could be doing, um, I am most concerned about these three: um, enrollment. Um, to make sure that every student um, uh, has access to the kind of education that we provide because we think we provide a different kind of college education. The second thing is retention. How do we make sure that as a university we are providing the kind of student experience in every way, academically, socially, physically, spiritually, that will produce in students the kind of thing that would have them coming back. And related to that is the, is the third wildly important goal, which is graduation rates. We want to make sure that if a student comes here, if a student bets on Charleston Southern, that we do everything in our power to get them out of here um, as quickly as possible so that they can go and change the world. Uh, so those are the kind of the outward looking things that we're concerned about, um, the, the inward looking things that we're concerned about. And that's, uh, if I can use the phrase, organizational culture. Right. We want to make sure that um, that we have the kind of culture that nurtures our, our, our fellow colleagues, you know, our teammates who are faculty and staff and coaches right. and others. Um, and, and the things that we're concerned about, well, we've narrowed it down to four core values that are really internally focused. The first of these is extra mile service. Mm. Uh, we want to make sure that every, every faculty member, every staff member, every coach um, uh, is concerned about making decisions that are good for students. And so if a student, if a colleague uh, needs our help, we want to have the kind of uh, community that says, how can I help you? Right. Uh, the, the P in EPIC is passion for student success. Sure. Um, every decision that we make ought to be focused on how can we make um, our students successful. The I in EPIC is innovation across the institution. What we discover is that the best ideas are probably never going to come from the president. They're never going to come from a vice president. In fact, um, they're going to come from a faculty member or a staff member who has day-to-day -day interaction with a student and understands the student life. A student is going to have a lot better idea about how to make student life better than some administrators are going to have. And so uh, innovation across the institution says, um, how do we make sure that those ideas um, bubble up, that they're acted upon, and, and uh, that the good ideas uh, help to make the place better? And C in EPIC is Christian community. How do we make sure that um, if you come to work at Charleston Southern, you know, we hold our standards high because Christ yes. um, commands us to do that. Um, the, the scriptures say that everything we do, whether whether we eat or drink or whatever else we do, we should do for the glory of God. And so if you're a faculty member, if you're a staff member, if you sit in a back office in a cubicle processing paperwork or, or contracts or whatever, right. that uh, you should be able to come to work and know that today I'm glorifying God in this cubicle. I'm, I'm glorifying God by serving a student, even if they never know my name um, or never understand what I do, that's okay because I know that God does. And so Christian community is a community where people are forgiving and loving. Um, and you know, th there's as there's minimal gossip. You know, all the things that can can cause uh, trouble in workplaces. What what we think is that um, if if 
we say we are following Christ in our daily lives, that should be evident in our work lives as well. And you all said this too, CSU's what? Servant leaders pursuing significant lives. You said this, our strategic plan is designed to guarantee that everything CSU does helps students become the servant leaders God wants them to be. A colleague who just demonstrates the value of going the extra mile and inspiring co-workers to follow suit. A spouse who models the character of Christ at work and at home. A parent who puts family for themselves. A neighbor who faith and impacts every fiber of his being seven days a week. And an engaged citizen making a difference in the church and the world. At CSU, serious scholarship and real relationships lay a solid foundation for serving leadership. How do you describe yourself as a leader, Dr. Costin? Yeah, well, y- you know, you never want to describe yourself, but what I what I hope is happening is that uh, I am, to the best of my ability with God's help, that I am modeling the same kinds of things that I, I, I want our students to model. You know, the, the idea of servant leadership is, uh, is uh, you know, you, you're, you're never going to be the smartest person in the room. Uh, and there, you want to surround yourself with people who are smarter than you are, who are brighter than you are, who have better ideas than you. Sure. Uh, and being a servant leader means that uh, um, you know my job is to remove obstacles from them so that they can go and do their jobs well. Um, it's it's not for me to dictate everything they do. It's but it is to hold them accountable uh, because we all have goals and dreams and plans that we're pursuing. Um, and uh, you know the, the the best leadership model I ever learned I earned I learned as a 17 year old kid at the U.S. Air Force Academy, um, and it's also the simplest model because uh, a leader's job is to balance people and mission. Right. And, and so some leaders are so focused on the people that they're you know overly nice, if you will, and they forget about the mission. Other leaders are so focused on the mission that they treat people as rungs on the ladder, as 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 cogs in the system, and they run over people to get the job done. And you can't do either of these very long um, and still succeed and have, have an effective organization. And so a good leader manages or, or, or leads people and mission balances them so that uh, there's equal concern for both. Um, inspiring the people to accomplish the mission, giving people a sense that whatever job, whatever your specific job description here is, you are a part of a larger organization which is glorifying God in what we do and accomplishing God's purpose. And so what we like to say is that if you take care of the people, the people will take care of the mission. Um, mm-hmm. And that's what the, the kind of leader I hope to be anyway. Yeah, you all, and you also said this too, leadership is not limited to CEOs. You also said this quote, everyone has the opportunity to lead by serving others within their particular sphere of influence. What is that sphere of influence here at the college, at the university, I should say? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, th- there are multiple spheres of influence here. And so maybe you work uh, in student life right. um, and maybe the, the sphere of influence you have, let's say you're a resident advisor. Um, the sphere of influence you have, you have a flock of students who are away from home for the first time who are in the most um, formative period of their lives because they're away from their parents or their guardians, whomever may have raised them, uh, and they're here in a very vulnerable spot. And so you may have responsibility for 10 or 12 people. Your sphere of influence is, are these, you know, 10 or 12 students. Now, that resident advisor who's going to be somebody in their teens or 20s maybe, um, they're going to have a lot more influence over those 10 or 12 students than I ever will. You know, I I might make policy. I might see them out on the the campus uh, here out and about. I might have a conversation with them. I might even have lunch with them, but I'm not going to be with them day in and day out influencing them in that way. And so uh, the sphere of influence that that a person has is what whatever God has given them. I love what Henry Blackaby um, uh, has famously said. He says that God is at work all around you and your job is to get in on what he's already doing. And so, Quentin, you know, you, you do that all the time. Wherever you go, you have that smile. <laughs> uh, you, you bless people wherever you go. And it, you, God has get, gifted you in so many ways. And you go, um, you, you are a perfect example of a person who goes the extra mile to serve people. Um, and that's what we want from our students is to be exactly that for them in their sphere of influence. Absolutely. And how do you influence your leadership team daily. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, always a challenge uh, because again, you've surrounded. Uh, in this case, we've surrounded ourselves with with high capacity, high achieving, um, uh, high performing individuals. Um, and uh, the you know one of the things that God wants from all of us um, because it makes the organization better is to be teachable. Um, and so I hope that I'm teachable. Um, as I said, you know I certainly have not arrived. Um, I'll be better if you come back in a year or two and we have a conversation. I hope to, to the good Lord that I'm better at what I'm doing now than I am today. And the same thing happens of all those around us. And so, you know, we have, just like any other organization, we have periodic meetings. We talk together um, as, a, as a team about what our goals are. We try to help each other out, you know, you know because um, uh, every organization has the, has the runs the risk of being overly siloed. But by bringing people together, by having... Um, our, our fundraising uh, person at the same table as our student life person, yeah. academic affairs, yeah. athletics, all this. We get to figure out together how we can make make life better for all. And then you know we have we do feedback with our leaders, and it's a it's a it's a back and forth. You know they let me know how I can improve. I let them know how they can improve. And then by so doing, our uh, our students and the organization are better off. Better off. And this is another one: pursuing significant lives. You said this quote by equipping students with a biblical worldview, com- competencies to perform at high levels, godly character, and experience the growth, the growth that at their grip, our mission includes guiding them to find a sweet spot in life, a condition that the Japanese refer to, and as a reason for being. But then, what is CSU's worldview from a biblical standpoint of the world right now? Yeah, yeah. Um, our worldview is we we think and we're pretty well convinced that uh, that the Bible um, gives is the guide for life. We feel we, we understand that God has given us the Bible. These are His written instructions, right. if you will. You know, God God is the God's the owner. God's the creator. God God made the God made the vehicle, yes. and He's given us this owner's manual. Um, and we have the option. You can follow the own, owner's manual like you can with your camera or your car or, or a bus or whatever right. or you or you can decide not to um, and what we all find to be the case is that if you follow the owner's manual uh, written you know by the creator uh, your life is going to be better your life is going to be best and so whereas a car um, needs to have its oil changed periodically and have certain tires and certain this and certain that we have to have certain disciplines certain spiritual disciplines and physical disciplines and um, intellectual disciplines to so that we can you know become better Better and better, and and as we, as we describe it, as the Bible describes it, the, the job, the goal of a Christian's life is to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And so, um, um, in, in every way, we should think like Him, and speak like Him, and feel like Him, and serve like Him. And so, the biblical worldview simply says every challenge, um, every decision is is run through the grid. Of the Bible, what would Jesus have us do, and then let's do that. Yes, yes, let's do that. You said this too. The best is yet to come. Despite the high education headwinds of declining national enrollment trends, public questioning of the value of a college degree, and increasing socialized secularization—that is, mm-hmm. Charleston Southern is radically blessed and well postured to scrimp in opposition in the most competitive landscape of our time. What are the enrollment trends here? Yeah, um, we we are we are seeing for about three se- semesters in a row. We're seeing um, our largest graduate enrollment uh, in uh, in our in our school's history. Mm-hmm. And so, as as the undergraduate enrollment uh, you know sort of flattens all across the country, right. um, we, what we're, we're having to think of new and creative ways to make sure that our, our enrollment increases. So much of that is going to be graduate education. You know, one of the reasons we started a new engineering program is because um, you know our intention is for an undergraduate enrollment to grow as well um, we have a very solid online program I don't know if you saw Quentin but yes. in late, lately um, the latest US News and World Report um, rankings that came out Charleston Southern University right here Charleston Southern was ranked number 11 in the nation wow. for online bachelor's degree programs, number eight for veterans in the entire country. And so we have high quality um, online education that we, that we are leveraging more and more uh, to make sure that, uh, that that quality turns into quantity of students because we believe that a student will have a first class, world class, high class 
education here, um, and we think that we can do it uh, in a way that promotes a, a Christian worldview. Um, and so all these together helps us to point to our wildly important goals of enrollment, retention, and graduation rates. I know we're approaching five o'clock, so let me ask you the last question. Which particular biblical scripture resembles this strategic plan? Yeah, I think we, we, we go back to the Great Commission, mm -hmm. all right? The Great Commission says that, uh, you know, Jesus' last command was, as you go, wherever you go, whether you're, you're, you're doing your, your, you know, this job or your other job or marketing, whatever, all the things that you get to do, um, the Great Commission says, wherever you go, make disciples. And so the, what we see here, and again, I'll go back to the fact that the founding documents of, of Charleston Southern University, when, when it was the Baptist College, right. Those founding documents listed the Great Commission as its its fundamental premise. And so we see here in a very parallel way, we see here that our educational enterprise, academic excellence in a Christian environment, is the way that God has called us to prepare young men and women, to disciple them, if you will, uh, to think like Christ, to act like Christ, to serve like Christ, to feel like Christ, to yeah. treat other people like Jesus Christ. And so the Great Commission is kind of who we are and what we do. And what is your passion here at CSU? And what's your passion or your purpose here as well? Yeah, our purpose, um, you know, one of our taglines is we tell students, your purpose is our mission. Mm -hmm. In other words, um, if a student comes to us, we've developed this uh, this uh, deal that we call the Passport to Purpose. Yeah. And uh, what we find is that most students, when they come to college, um, uh, don't know what they want to major in. Um, some of them do, but most either don't know at the beginning or they decide later to change their mind. Right. And so we think of this Passport to Purpose, think of the four years as four destinations. Mm -hmm. In the freshman year, this Passport to Purpose, um, uh, we help a student discover their passion. You know, what is it you're passionate about? What is it that you want to do with your life? Um, even if you don't quite know when you first come in the door, we get to help you understand what that is. Uh, the, the second destination, think about your sophomore year, um, is determining your pathway. In other words, think of deciding what your major is going to be. Think of um, what kind of major is going to allow you to accomplish your passion in life. Then the, the, the junior year, think about um, developing your potential. Um, here you're taking upper level courses. You're thinking, you know, abstract and abstract ways. You're, 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 you're clarifying and solidifying critical thinking and problem solving and how to use technology, um, how to be a servant leader. And then in the, in the senior year, uh, we talk about declaring your purpose. And so in this Passport to Purpose, these four years, we help you connect it by discovering your passion, uh, determining your pathway, um, uh, developing your potential, and declaring your purpose. We help you connect passion to purpose in these four years. And so when we say to a student, your purpose is our mission, that's exactly what we mean. mean. And if I were to interview you again for Quintus Close Ups next year, what would you tell me you'll get done in the strategic plan next year? Oh, yeah. So, Quentin, when you come back, um, you will see, um, well, from the last time you were here, right. you would see a brand new physical therapy building because two years from May, our first class of doctor of physical therapy programs will come in. Right. I would take you over and have you sit in uh, one of these now four or five classes of, of uh, uh, doctor of education and leadership programs. Uh, you come back, I'll walk you over sure. and we can see the new engineering building because yeah. it'll be just about finished. And right. we can talk about um, uh, the new lab spaces in there because we need overflow for for chemical uh, chemistry and biology classes we'll take you into the maker space where you'll see some robotics for engineering we'll have you talk to some engineering students we'll have you uh, ask them um, why are you studying engineering in Charleston Southern um, and uh, you know we, we might even be able to talk about uh, uh, don't tell anybody but a brand new a brand new aviation program and so that'll be for next time Dr. Gandhi Costin thank you so much for your time again welcome back to Clinton's Close Ups Pleasure, Quentin. Thank you. God bless you. Likewise. Thank you. Hope to see you again at Peloton. All right. <laughs>